Coming in at number 10, Easter Island. I had to start off number 10 with this one as it's pretty ahead of the game. Easter Island has been host to hundreds of theories as to why these massive heads exist on the island. Imagine being the first group of people to visit that island after thousands of years and just seeing an abandoned island with massive stone monolithic heads. Yeah, like they're so weird. That would be shocking to say the least. But what's even more interesting about this island is what researchers have discovered actually happened. Around 1200 AD, Polynesians ventured to the island across the open sea to land on this 63 square mile lush island and name it Rapa Nui. They carved these immense 13 feet tall, 14 ton Maui monolithic structures out of volcanic stone and then moved them to different ceremonial structures. But how did they do that? Well, they had to cut down a bunch of trees so they could roll them to the places, which depleted the soil. They also cleared trees for agriculture, eventually leading them to burn grass and with the addition of Polynesian rat stowaways, this would all eventually lead to the island's collapse. Easter Island, though once a mystery, now stands as an example of what happens when the appetite of humanity goes unchecked. There's more to unpack about this story that I don't have time to talk about, but a great book on this is Collapse by Jared Diamond and The Enigmas of Easter Island by John Flenley and Paul Vaughn. My boyfriend actually just finished reading the collapse book and it's very good apparently. Coming in at number 9 is Star Island. Located in the city of Miami Beach, Star Island is actually a man-made island that was completed in 1922. You can access the island quite easily by land or by barrier islands and it's had a lot of famous residents over the years like Shaq, Emilio and Gloria Estefan, P. Diddy, etc. But despite the celeb appeal, it's actually been the site of a lot of horror. The Oceanic Hotel was built on the island in 1873 but burned down two years later. Later. When the owners rebuilt it, there were many reports of the fourth floor of the new hotel being haunted, with guests saying they could hear furniture being dragged around in empty rooms and doors opening and closing when no one was there. They would also hear scratches at their window and voices along with those scratches. People speculated it was the guests that had died in the previous hotel that were haunting the new one. Now for horror number two. Twenty years prior, Reverend George Beebe moved there to preach on the island. The fresh sea air also made it a very popular area for tuberculosis patients to come visit and the reverend held a lot of sermons for them not knowing five years later all three of his daughters would get the illness and die. The girls were buried in the cemetery he made and he left the island soon after that and I really really can't blame the man. But many tourists have seen the girls running in the cemetery and heard them giggling as they've been close to their graves. Others have even heard the whispering of small children reciting bible verses. Wow they really are holier than thou. Last but not least, if ghosts were bad enough, people believe that vampires also inhabit the island. Since it used to be a TB camp way back when, historically New England vampires were born after dying from TB, so there's that link there as well. Could this be the new set of Twilight? I don't really know. At number 8 we have Heart Island, also known as the Island of the Dead. Off to a great start here clearly. Located in New York and honestly this island has been through it. It used to be the location of a psychiatric institution, a prison war camp, a boys reformatory school, a tuberculosis sanatorium, a rehab center, a jail and a potter's field. Was there anything happy on that list? I really don't think so. More than 1 million people are buried on the island, many of which weren't claimed by their families or were homeless. Homeless. Access to the island is restricted unless you're a family member of someone buried there and even then you need to request access beforehand. From the name you can probably guess that many, many people believe the island is haunted and with that many people buried there it'd be impossible if it wasn't. No one has the option to live there but I don't think anyone would even if they did. Filling our number 7 slot is Alcatraz Island and lord knows this one had to be on the list. If there's one island that has a notoriously bad reputation that everyone knows it's Alcatraz. Located in San Francisco Bay, the island is home to the oldest operating lighthouse on the west coast and a very, very well known abandoned prison. Now before the prison, the island was inhabited by Native Americans for thousands of years and even they kept tribal members there who broke the rules. By 1934, it was turned into a maximum security prison and during the 29 years the prison was in use, the penitentiary claimed no prisoner ever escaped successfully. 36 tried, 23 were caught, 
two drowned, six were shot while trying to escape, and five were never found and presumed dead. Al Capone was in there, George Machine Gun Kelly, Alvin Creepy Carpus. So many notorious criminals were held in Alcatraz, the island is oozing history. The guards were very well trained to guard the men, but they had no clue about rehabilitation. They used to torture the inmates verbally and physically, and inmates would do it to each other as well. Now, a lot of horrible things happened on this island, and there are specific rooms and cells where a variety of ghostly sightings and activities have been reported by visitors, rangers, and even prisoners. Whispering has been heard in the cells, you can see phantom figures looming in the corridors, cell doors locking and unlocking, cold spots in random parts of the prison, and even the sound of musical instruments being played. Apparently, every single guard and official who served there experienced something out of the ordinary. Now, at number six is Dead Man's Island. Located in Vancouver, Dead Man's Island was a site of a lot of death, as you guys got from the title. It had been a native tree burial cemetery in the past, and when the first white settlers went there, they found hundreds of red cedar boxes attached to trees, and after one fell and opened, they found a bunch of bones and a tassel of black hair, which were the remains of the Squamish people. When the settlers tried to acquire the island, they were warned by Chief Capilano of the fact the island is dead ground. A battle had taken place between two tribes, the North and South nations, over claims to the island. During the battle, 200 kids, women, and elders were captured by the South and helped captive. In exchange for them, 200 Northern warriors traded themselves in and were all killed on the spot. And if that's not enough death, in the late 1800s, the island was transformed into a quarantine site for victims of smallpox and those who didn't survive are still buried there. The island was then the location of a logging dispute when Theodore Ludgate wanted to make it a lumber mill, and as soon as he tried to cut down a tree, he was arrested, but it was said they could hear shrieking and rattling bones when they tried to. Hence, no one has tried to cut down any trees since. Recent residents say they've heard footsteps in their house when no one else was on the island, and that they can see a glow coming from the trees that sometimes sharpens into a person. Coming in at number 5 is Okonoshima Island. Three kilometers away from the coast of Japan, you can get to Okonoshima Island by ferry. And it's a nice island, honestly. There are walking trails for tourists, campsites, historical sites. It's not just an overgrown jungle. People refused to live on the island for many reasons. For one, the island was used during the Russo Japanese War, where it was chosen to start developing chemical weapons. Construction, development, and storage were all kept a secret, and residents and workers weren't even told what the plant was making, despite many of them suffering from toxic exposure related sicknesses. The place used to produce over six kilotons of tear gas and mustard gas. The island was far enough from Tokyo that it didn't really pose a threat to it, but after the war was over, everything was burned or destroyed, and everyone was told to basically not say anything about it. But even now, nobody lives on the island, well, unless you count the fact that it's overrun with rabbits who aren't even native to that part of the world. Rabbit Island, as some call it, has so many rabbits because they all descended from the first ones let loose on the island when they tried to turn it into a park after the war. They also used the rabbits to test the chemical weapons on, but the ones on the island now are not related to the mutated ones. I don't know how they can even prove that, but sure. At number four is Ellis Island. Located in New York Harbor, the island used to be America's busiest immigrant inspection station for 60 years. 12 million immigrants passed through the island in that time, and 240,000 of them were rejected for health reasons. 3,000 of those either died in the hospital there or committed suicide. So the structures on the island are as follows. There's a massive main building that has a kitchen, storage space, dorms, a bakery, etc. Then there's the ferry building, and finally the main hospital building. Families were separated when kids would be accepted, but their sick parents would not, so the building has a very teary past. Over the years, nurses and technicians admitted they'd hear voices and smell burning candles coming from the Great Hall, despite it being empty. The whispers of crying children can also be heard all over the building, even long after there were no kids there. I don't know why this whole separating kids and parents thing is reminding me a whole lot of what's going on in America right now, but that's none of my business. Filling our number three slot is Corregidor Island. Now, this island is located near the entrance of Manila Bay in the Philippines, and because of its location, the island has always had coastal artillery on it to defend Manila from enemy warships. During World War II, the island played a major role in freeing the Philippines from Japanese forces. In 1942, Japanese forces took over the island where they starved and tortured over 3,000 Filipinos and Americans. The island was ambushed again during the latter part of the war, and in 1945, the Americans wanted to 
recapture the island which resulted in nearly 7,000 Japanese soldiers dying and 1,000 deaths on the American Filipino side. I honestly feel like a history teacher. Do you guys agree? <laughs> when this happened, it's said that 3,000 Japanese soldiers chose suicide over being captured so they sealed themselves in tunnels and caves and died in there. It was one of the biggest mass suicides that had ever taken place. And people say there's more blood that's flown on this island than water and that's saying something. If that doesn't deter you from wanting to live here, honestly nothing will. Now number 2 is Norfolk Island. Located between New Zealand and Australia, the island was first home to East Polynesians but they were long gone when the British got to it in 1788. After that point, the island was a convict penal settlement. Since it was so remote, the British used it to house their most violent criminals and many used to describe it as hell on earth. Why? Because since the early 1800s, the amount of rape, torture and murder that's taken place on the island is endless because of the thousands and thousands of criminals that lived there. Forget the criminals, even the guards were vicious. The island is actually the fourth most haunted island in the world and with everything that's happened there, are any of you really surprised? So if you want to move somewhere that's been dubbed hell on earth, be my guest, but I will not be joining you there. And finally, at number one is Pavilia Island. Located between Venice and Lido, the island's first record of existence was actually in 421 and was populated till 1379. By 1776, the island was used as a quarantine area for people suffering from the plague and other diseases and this lasted more than a century. The area was then transformed into a mental hospital in 1922 where a doctor used to experiment on his patients with crude lobotomies. And if you've ever seen a lobotomy in a video or a movie, you know how screwed up they are. It's like the person just becomes a shell afterwards. Either way, after experimenting on his patients for years, he committed suicide by jumping from the hospital tower. Apparently, he'd gone mad from being haunted by so many ghosts, and I can definitely see why a bunch of patients would be angry with him after death and haunt him. The reasons are there. And I hate the thought of all derelict mental hospitals on a good day, but today particularly, I'm scared. The island is completely off limits to visitors and tourists, and I imagine the ghosts of all those dead people are very much still around. Kicking off the list at number 10, Vulcan Point. This one for sure scratches the brain, okay? You may be thinking islands that don't make sense. It's not just a piece of land in the middle of a body of water. What's the big deal here? Well, most of the time, yeah, that's what an island is, but Vulcan Point, things get weird. It kind of depends where you're standing on this one. This island is located in the Philippines, and it's an island that's on a lake that's also surrounded by an island that's on the Pacific Ocean. Got it? Me neither. In our ninth spot, we have Getters Island. Situated in the Delaware River is an island known as Getters Island. I mean, it's not the fanciest island out there, but if you want a little getaway, this place will do. Except there's just one teensy little flaw to it. It's haunted. So the island was actually named after Charles Getter, a man who was hung on the island after murdering his wife. But the hanging didn't quite go as planned. On the first attempt, the rope snapped and Getter fell to the floor. He was then waiting around for 20 minutes until they got a new rope. He died the next time around. Now it's said that his ghost haunts the island and is blamed for any tragedy that occurs on or near the island. In fact, 30 years later, a steamboat's boiler malfunctioned near the island's banks. It exploded and killed the 12 passengers on board. But if you can get past the island's haunted past, then feel free to scoop this place up. At number 8 we have Corregidor Island. This island is located near the entrance of Manila Bay in the Philippines. And I know what you're thinking, who wouldn't want to live on an island in the tropical east? Me. Well, due to its location, the island had always had coastal artillery on it to defend Manila from enemy warships. During World War II, the island played a huge role in freeing the Philippines from Japanese forces. In 1942, Japanese forces took over the island where they starved and tortured over 3,000 Filipinos and Americans. The island was ambushed again at the end of the war and by 1945, the Americans wanted to recapture the island. They were like, oh hell no. That recapture resulted in nearly 7,000 Japanese soldiers dying and a thousand deaths on the American Filipino side. When this happened, it's said that 3,000 Japanese soldiers chose suicide over being captured by the enemy, so they sealed themselves in tunnels and caves and wait to just die in there. It was one of the biggest mass suicides that had ever taken place, and just imagine there's been more blood flowing through the gutters of this island than water. That has to lower the market price of the island, surely. You know what I mean? Nope. 
no buying this. Making our way down the list at number seven, we have the Island of Dolls, aka the island I never want to visit. And if you are creeped out by dolls just like me, I suggest you stay far away from this island as well. Located in Mexico City, the Island of Dolls is full of dolls hanging from trees and buildings. If that's not bad enough, these dolls have been there for so long that they are covered in dirt and cobwebs and insects. That just makes them look that much more terrifying. Oh, but it gets worse. Apparently the island is also haunted. The dolls were hung all over the island to try to scare the souls of the deceased that haunt the island. One man spent more than 50 years hanging all of these dolls up. Some of these dolls were dirty or missing limbs after being pulled out from the trash. But that didn't matter to him. Just makes it creepier for visitors. Now, this island is abandoned and looks something straight out of a horror movie. The only residents on the island now are the dolls and the ghosts. Now at number 6 is Norfolk Island. Nestled between New Zealand and Australia, the island was first home to East Polynesians, but they were long gone when the British got to it in 1788. After that point, the island was a convict penal settlement. Since it was so remote, the British used it to house their most violent criminals and many dubbed it as hell on earth. Why you may be asking? Because since the early 1800s, the amount of rape, torture and murder that's taken place on the island is endless because of the thousands and thousands of criminals criminals that lived there. Forget the criminals, even the guards were vicious. The island is actually the fourth most haunted island in the world, and with everything that's happened there, are any of you really surprised? So if you want to buy an island that's been nicknamed Hell on Earth, be my guest, but I will not be visiting. No staycation for me. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Paviglia Island. With bright blue waters and a gondola ride away from Venice, who wouldn't want to own this island? Answer is, a lot of people. The island has a very, very dark past. During the Middle Ages when the plague took the lives of thousands, this island was used as a dumping ground for the bodies. Then in the 1920s, this island had a mental institution, but the hospital workers were corrupt and often conducted experiments on the patients. Then over the years, the island has been bought and sold three times. The first two owners sold the island after witnessing some paranormal activity. It's said that the souls of the deceased haunt the island. In fact, to this day, this island is known as one of the most haunted places on earth. At number 4 is Daxa. So this abandoned southern Croatian island is only 0.07 km squared large and has a Franciscan monastery built on top of it. It's cute enough, but one catastrophically tragic event occurred there that repels even the most keen buyers. Back in 1944, 53 men who were accused of collaboration by the Yugoslav partisans were all executed on the island. A week prior, the partisans had entered the capital Dubrovnik and arrested 300 people. All 53 were killed without any trial whatsoever. 18 of the bodies had been identified via DNA, but the other 35 had not. Then in 2010, the remains were reinterred and it was found out that Dubrovnik's mayor, Niko Koprivica, Koprivica, correct me if I'm wrong, Croatians, was among the victims of the massacre. I will not be buying any island that a massacre took place on of innocent people who deserved at least a child, but I guess that's World War II for you. We have all criminals just fleeing to Argentina and just innocent Croatians just getting killed for no reason. In our third spot, we have Motu Matatahi. Being one of the many islands in French Polynesia, the Matu Matatahi looks like a tropical paradise. You have white sandy beaches, bright blue waters, tons of vegetation, and a slight radiation problem. Yeah, you heard me. From 1960 to 1996, France conducted 193 nuclear tests in the South Pacific. They claimed that the explosions were contained, but that was not the case. There is still radiation in that area. In fact, tons of residents throughout the area have developed thyroid cancers and leukemia. It's thought that this is due to radiation still being present. If that doesn't deter you, then maybe the cyclones, storms, landslides, and tsunamis that also threaten the area will. 
Now at number 2 is Okonoshima Island. Located 3 kilometers away from the coast of Japan, you can get to Okonoshima Island by ferry. And it's a nice island, don't get me wrong, it's very gram worthy for sure. There are walking trails for tourists, campsites, historical sites, and it's not just an overgrown jungle. Now there are many reasons why people refuse to live on the island. For one, the island was used during the Russo-Japanese War, where it was chosen as a place to start developing chemical weapons. Construction, development and storage were all kept a secret so residents and workers weren't even told what the plant was making despite many of them suffering from toxic exposure related illnesses. Like how do you not tell the locals who are directly negatively suffering from what you're doing, what you're doing? The place used to produce over 6 kilotons of tear gas and mustard gas which is insanity you guys. Thankfully the island was far enough away from Tokyo that it didn't really pose the threat to those citizens but that doesn't mean people didn't get hurt. Now post war everything was burned or destroyed and everyone was told to not say anything about it. It was kind of like a sweep it under the rug situation. Nowadays nobody lives on the island unless you count the fact that it's overrun with rabbits who aren't even native to that part of the world. Rabbit Island as some people call it has so many rabbits because they all descended from the first ones let loose on the island when they tried to turn it into a park after the war. They also use the rabbits to test the chemical weapons on but the ones on the island now are not related to the mutated ones. I don't know how they figured that out but they did. And in our number one spot we have Snake Island. About 25 miles off the coast of Brazil there is an island no one dares to step foot on. I mean it's a beautiful island but it's infested with deadly snakes. In fact, this island is so dangerous that the Brazilian government has banned anyone from ever going there. This island is apparently home to around 4,000 snakes, most of them being golden lancehead vipers, aka one of the deadliest serpents in the world. It's said that this type of viper can grow up to be 18 inches long, and it's so poisonous that one bite can kill you within an hour. Legend goes that a fisherman arrived at this island in search of bananas, but was found days later in his boat, dead in a pool of his own blood. Then from 1909 to the 1920s, a family lived on the island to run the lighthouse. But according to another legend, the entire family was found dead after a group of snakes came into their home and attacked them. So yeah, any takers on this island? Kicking off the list at number 10, Snake Island. Well, this island already sounds awful. What's going on here? Snake Island is located 95 miles off the coast of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Is that just a name of an island or do a bunch of snakes live here? Well, sorry to tell you. Both. What happened originally was thousands of years ago, the part of the land that once connected the island to mainland disappeared. The ocean rose up before any of these snakes had time to pack their snake bags and they were stuck on this island forever. These snakes were stuck on the island decade after decade, so now these stuck snakes are just gonna, you know, mate and have more snakes. Now the island's full of snakes. The number of snakes is going up. Higher and higher, it's never stopping. One of the deadliest snakes in the world, the Golden Lancehead Viper. Yeah, there's over 4,000 of them on this island. It's horrible. Back from 1902 to the early 1920s, a few brave souls lived there and operated the lighthouse. But according to some local myths, the last lighthouse keeper was swarmed by snakes after he left a window open. Worst thing I've ever heard. Let's move on. Now coming in at number nine are the Pitcairn Islands. Now this group of volcanic islands is the least populated jurisdiction in the world. The first inhabitants were the mutineers of the HMS Bounty, but now the population is like 50 people or less. It's gotten so bad that the government is actually begging people to live there. They're willing to give settlers a free plot of land to build on, but even with that insane offer, no one's up for it. And I feel like that may be due to the sexual abuse case of 2004 where a third of the male population on the island were convicted of pedophilia and sexual assault. Yeah, I wouldn't want to buy or live on an island where such a large part of the population are just people that could hurt me. Now there are also no jobs on the island, there's like one general store where you have to order your food supply three months in advance, so that's not really that appealing is it? But at least it has electricity and internet. Oh who am I kidding, no one's gonna buy it anyway. Making our way down the list, number 8 we have Partridge Island. This island located in St. John, New Brunswick has a very sinister history. And apparently New Brunswick has a lot of scary islands. Legend has it that between 1785 to 1850, thousands of residents died there from typhus and cholera. There were so many dead bodies that the soil had a hard time disintegrating them all. Some believe that if you go on this island, chances are you will stumble across someone's remains. 
But not only that, this island is said to be haunted by tons of different ghosts. It's haunted by a soldier that committed suicide there, and by people who got trapped and died in one of the tunnels there. Not only that, but it's said to never go to the island after dark. And if you're on the island when night falls, well, you're pretty much dead. The island is extremely dangerous at nighttime. Tons of people have broken bones trying to make their way across it at night. Others have drowned or fallen to their death. Also, at night, people have heard screams and cries for help coming from the island. But when the coast guards investigate, they find no one. So they believe that these are the sounds of the ghosts that haunt the island. Filling our number 7 slot is the Isle of Wight. This is the biggest and second most populous island in England and is also known as Britain's most haunted island. Already gonna do very well in the property market, I can just see it now. <laughs> Not. Now it used to house a lot of fortification back in the war days and it was a bit of a holiday retreat for Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The Stone Age community left an ancient tomb near Freshwater Bay on the island, which means there are hella spirits there. TB patients were also shipped off there and just just left for dead and the ghosts of all these people have been known to haunt the island groaning and floating through the town. Places like Knighton Gorgeous Manor and God's Providence House are known to be supernatural hotspots. The manor has a really dark history with it as well with a serial killer resident living there like Hugh de Morville and his three accomplices. Later on in the 1800s the owner of the manor George Maurice burned it down just to spite his daughter. Petty much? The criminals have been seen riding horses on the anniversary of their deaths and the manor seems to house animal like apparitions that look like gargoyles but aren't. I don't want to find out what they do look like. <laughs> no. Coming in at number 6 we have Ramry Island. Located in Myanmar, this island is considered one of the most dangerous islands in the world. So during World War II, this island was the site for many battles. In 1945, the British soldiers drove the Japanese fighters off of the main area of the island forcing them to flee into the marshy area surrounding the island. One problem, those marshes were filled with hungry crocodiles. As a result, 500 soldiers were killed by these crocodiles. In fact, this incident is featured in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most number of fatalities in a crocodile attack, and it's the greatest disaster suffered by humans from an animal. Now it's said that the ghosts of those who died haunt the island. So if you don't mind some ghosts and crocodiles, feel free to scoop up this island. Now at number 5 is Hart Island, also known as the Island of the Dead, so we're off to a great start here clearly. Located in New York, this island has been through it. It used to be the location of a psychiatric institution, a prison war camp, a boys reformatory school, a tuberculosis sanatorium, a rehab center, a jail, and a potter's field. Was there anything happy or even remotely positive on that list? I don't think so. Now more than a million people are buried on the island, many of whom weren't claimed by their family or were just homeless. Access to the island is restricted unless you're a family member of someone who's buried there and even then you have to request access before actually going. From the name you can probably guess that many many people believe the island is haunted and with that many people buried there it'd be almost impossible if it wasn't. No one has the option to live there but I don't think anyone would even if they did let alone buy it. Too many dead people. Just creepy. In our fourth spot, we have Tillamook Island, otherwise known as the Terrible Tilly. This is the smallest island on this list. It's less than an acre in size. All that they have room for on this island is a single lighthouse. Now, there's a reason why they call the island Terrible Tilly. The island is often terrorized by waves that could wipe you out in an instant. This made the construction of the lighthouse very hard. In fact, it took 500 days to complete. Then in 1881, a ship crashed on shore, killing all the members on board, except for the crew's dog. Thank gosh the puppy was safe, that's all I care about. Furthermore, the island is notorious for being cursed or haunted by evil spirits. Four men ended up running the lighthouse on the island, but living in isolation without their families drove them insane. On one night shift, all four men saw a ghost ship approach the island. Other lightkeepers have been attacked by ghosts and have heard sounds of creepy moaning. In fact, one lighthouse keeper had to be taken away in a straitjacket after being driven mad by the ghosts. 
At number three is Hashima Island. Located in Nagasaki, Hashima was once one of the most populated parts of Japan, but now lies completely deserted. The island was known for housing many undersea coal mines where conscripted Koreans and Chinese prisoners were forced to work in horrible conditions. Now, the temperature down in the mines would be 30 degrees Celsius every day, which actually really isn't that bad, but the humidity was at 95%, which is deathly. Around 1,300 workers died due to malnutrition, exhaustion, and other miscellaneous accidents, or whatever shape things that means. Other sources say the death toll was actually above 2,000, but we won't know for sure. What's even more eerily creepy about the island is that the building ruins are all untouched. Everything's undisturbed by nature. And I feel like when places are abandoned like that, the creepiest people are always just lurking in the shadows who are sort of just forgotten there or just chose to stay. In our second spot, we have Palmyra Atoll Island. Palmyra Atoll Island is a beautiful island with white beaches and bright blue waters located near the Hawaiian and islands, but it's a place that no one ever wants to visit. Why? Well, it's said to have a very dark history of countless murders. So back in 1870, a crew aboard a ship called the Angel were shipwrecked near the island. The survivors who made it to shore were later found brutally murdered. Their bodies were found scattered throughout the island. No one knows what on earth happened to them. But that's not the only strange thing that happened there. A plane was flying above the island when all of a sudden it just dropped out of the sky. Rescue teams were never able to find the plane. Then this happened again with a different plane that was flying over the island. All of a sudden, it just disappeared off the radar and vanished without a trace. You thought I was done? No, there's more. In 1974, Eleanor Graham and her husband Malcolm Graham decided to go visit the island. Once they made it there, they were never heard from again. That was until several years later when Eleanor's skeletal remains were found in a large container wrapped in barbed wire. She had been beaten to death, her body was burned and dismembered. Malcolm's body was never found. And no one knows what happened to them. Something or someone on this island is responsible for these murders. We just don't know what it is or I don't know, it's pretty scary. I don't think it's an animal because how will an animal like wrap it up? And yeah. <laughs> and finally, at number one is Dead Man's Island. Located in Vancouver, Dead Man's Island has a history of a lot of death, as you guys probably guessed from the name. Prior to white settlers coming, the island had been a native tree burial cemetery, and when the settlers got there, they found hundreds of red cedar boxes attached to the trees. Now, one fell down, and inside they found a bunch of bones and a tassel of black hair, which later turned out to be the remains of the Squamish people. When the settlers tried to acquire the island, they were warned by Chief Capilano that the island is dead ground. A battle had taken place between two tribes, the North and South nations, over claims to the island. During the battle, 200 kids, women, and elders were captured by the South and held captive. In exchange for them, 200 Northern warriors traded themselves in and were all killed on the spot. And if that's not enough death, in the late 1800s, the island was transformed into a quarantine site for victims of smallpox, and those who didn't survive were also buried there. The island was then the location of a logging dispute when Theodore Ludgate wanted to make it a lumber mill. As soon as he tried to cut down a tree, he was arrested, but it was said they could hear shrieking and rattling bones when they tried. Hence, no one has tried to cut down any trees since. Recent residents say they've heard footsteps in their houses when no one else was on the island, and that they can see a glow coming from the trees that sometimes sharpens into a shape of a human. To be fair, I feel like this island is protecting itself from being bought, and I like that energy. You stay on Bible. Starting us off with number 10 is Gaiola Island. As one of Naples' minor islands, Gaiola is actually super close to Italy's coast to the point you can actually swim there in a few strokes. Here's just some front crawl, how convenient. <laughs> anyway, by the turn of the 20th century, the island was considered cursed and for good reason. Let's rewind. In the 1920s, the island belonged to Hans Braun, who was mysteriously found dead wrapped in a rug. No idea how he died, who wrapped him up, nothing. A little while later, his wife ended up drowning at sea, so so far the score is island two, human zero. Then we move on to the next owner, Otto Grunbach, who ended up having a heart attack while staying in the villa on the 
Island. The next owner, Maurice Yves Santos, states he committed suicide in a mental institute. What are we at now? 4 0. After her, then came Carl Paul Langheim, who went bankrupt soon after the purchase. The next owner suffered many deaths in his family after he bought the island, and the next owner got it the worst. J. Paul Getty's youngest son died, his oldest son then committed suicide, and his grandson got kidnapped. Like, so many things went wrong for him, I feel so bad for him. Now, the last owner of the island ended up in jail and the couple who owned the villa opposite the island were found murdered. I fully believe this island is cursed, it seems pretty damn evident, I don't need to buy that with the money I don't have. Number 9. Surtsey Island While some islands ban humans, others ban humans and seeds. Yeah, no seeds allowed on Surtsey Island. Leave the work snackies behind, my friend. Surtsey Island is an important one on our list here today, as this island was born in 1963. We got a brand new baby island. This new island emerged from the sea 20 miles off the coast of Iceland, and it took around four years for Mother Nature to complete this little passion project. An undersea volcano formed this island over the course of four years. Just slowly, just making a new island. That's a long, hot process, so now what? What do you do with a brand new island? Sandals Resort? Disney Parks? No and nope. Nobody is allowed on this island. The whole idea of Surtsey Island, which I love, is that scientists are trying to study how ecosystems can form themselves without the involvement of us, of us humans. Scientists around the world have all gathered around to do nothing about this island. They're just gonna watch. Only a select few can enter this island, and right before they clock in, they're checked head to toe to make sure they don't have any seeds. Zero seeds. Why? Oh, because scientists found a tomato growing and they were scratching their heads. Where did this come from? How, out of nowhere, how could it be? They were stumped until they found out somebody went number two in that same spot long before. Yeah, welcome to Surtsey Island. Hold it. Better not take a shit here or you're fired, buddy. Number eight, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is the home of the Sentinelese tribe. One of the most forbidden islands on the world. We're talking about it, let's do it. Located in the Bay of Bengal, North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers away from India. And while most islands are shrinking, this one is actually growing. It grew back in 2004 phenomenally. Back in 2004, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake. So the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. The inhabitants on North Sentinel Island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. You've probably heard about them or seen the thumbnail at some point. They have apparently been around for thousands of years, but there's no sign of agriculture or even fire. Yet still, this tribe has somehow continued to thrive. If we try and get close, they will attack us. After the 2004 tsunami, the Indian Coast Guard flew over to check on the island, make sure everyone's okay. But once they flew too close, the tribe attacked with arrows. So they could not land, obviously, but what if you arrived by boat? What would happen? Well also bad. Back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Sentinelese have lived here for around 60,000 years, and I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. Number 7, Niwa Island. Located in Hawaii, Niwa Island is quite small, and its population as well is pretty minimal, but why? Where is everyone? This is a beautiful island. Why wouldn't you want to live here? Why do only 170 people live on arguably one of the most beautiful islands in the world? Niwa Island has also been referred to as the Forbidden Island, hence why we're including it on our list here today. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since then. So no one knows what's going on, hence the small population. The thing is though, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit the islands and a ban was then put in place permanently. You couldn't leave or enter the island. That's it. Locked down to the extreme, like an island locked down, that'd be so scary. Nobody got sick, but now if you want to enter the island, you need to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Absolutely no tourists or outsiders allowed, period. It was sold by Hawaii's king Kamakamaha back in 1863 to the Robinson family, but as of 1915, no outsiders, again, are still allowed in. Some island cult behavior is going on here, I don't know. Whoever lives here does so without plumbing, telephone lines, or Netflix. Impressive. Even today, the island is, of course, off bounds. The Coast Guard is always patrolling the island, too, as well. What do you think lies on Niwa Island? Top secret government stuff? Probably. Number six, Heard Island. Have you heard about this island? Heard Island? No? Well, listen up. Right in the middle of Antarctica and Australia, there is this island, Heard Island. The Australian government has made it illegal for anybody to visit it, so if you have some free time and a kayak and some suntan lotion, don't even think about it. Go the other way. You won't make it. So why is this island forbidden? Is this one full of deadly snakes? Maybe, honestly. The myth here surrounding Heard Island is that there's animals we don't even know exist living here. We got some secret hybrid animals. This sounds a lot like Jurassic Park so far. The island itself is quite unique geographically. 
See, Heard Island is home to two volcanoes as well as the tallest mountain in Australia. So there's plenty of space for hybrid animals to hide and be scary. I love the idea of animals getting their own island, honestly. We have, we have enough, I'd say. Time to give one or two back. Except for Snake Island, that one, we don't want that one. You can keep that one for sure. Number five, North Brother Island. Located right between Rikers Island and the Bronx, quietly tucked away on the East River, North Brother Island was once home to a hospital back in the 19th century. You may be thinking a hospital on an island, how inconvenient is this? What's going on? Riverside Hospital was available for patients suffering from yellow fever, smallpox, or tuberculosis. So it was a quarantine zone, essentially. The hospital has since been abandoned. It's now sitting there, literally falling to pieces. And the island, has been quite active, oddly. A body was found near the island recently. A steamship called the General Slocum crashed on the island. There's also a haunted lighthouse on this island. And they even have what's referred to as Coffin Corner on this island. Yeah, Coffin Corner. I'm all set. I'd rather explore the Bronx than explore this island, honestly. Number four, Robbins Island. Okay, we have a forbidden island and it's not cursed. We have a nice one, dare I say, here we go. The privately owned Robinson Island is massive and beautiful. It's not made of lava or snakes, it's just sand and trees, just a good time. And best of all, no humans at all. The 435 acre island sits off the coast of New Suffolk, New York. Many names have come and go when it comes to island ownership here, but as of right now, it's forbidden and it's a nature preserve. I'm okay with that, we can stay away from that one. The owner now is a man named Louis Bacon. He has poured time and money into building the sanctuary and he fears that if anybody else gets involved, the whole thing will just fail. Honestly, considering our number one spot, he's got a point. Aside from that side quest that Mr. Bacon's pulling off, Robbins Island is also home to the largest population of turtles in the state. So don't worry, he's not completely alone. It's got a bunch of turtles. Number three, Diego Garcia Island. An island with an airport. Okay, there's gotta be something good here, right? Located in the Indian Ocean, Diego Garcia is perhaps one of the most bizarre on this list. Definitely interesting. The island was once a part of the United Kingdom, but in order to settle up a debt in the millions, the UK had to hand it over to the United States. Gee, I wonder what they did with it. Is it a turtle sanctuary? Is it a forbidden seed island part two, perhaps? What's the game plan here? What are we doing? Well, today Diego Garcia is a top secret military base hence the airport. Although it's forbidden to enter, there's over 600 buildings resting on this island, as well as thousands of military personnel, but again, nobody knows what the island is really hiding, or what it's being used for. Maybe this is where they're keeping the Winter Soldier. Could be. He could punch through anyone. He could punch 6,000 people easily. Number two, Paviglia Island. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. When the bubonic plague arrived in 1348, the island then became a quarantine colony just like our one earlier. So if you had symptoms, you were sent to this island to, yeah. It was a sad reality, not a lot of solutions back then. Again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in and once again, the center of this island became a mass graveyard. All bad so far. The soil, they say, is 50% human remains at this point. So if you're looking to plant some haunted sunflowers, there you go, there's your soil, weirdo. Today the island is abandoned, rightfully so. It's closed off to both tourists and locals. Hey, now that things are opening up again, what do you say we head to Pavigli Island? Check out some bubonic plague history. No, we're good? All right, cool. We'll go to Niagara Falls. If it's dark history doesn't scare you away, the ghost stories surrounding the island might. In the early 20th century, mentally ill patients were sent to this island, but the doctor that was responsible for curing them for all these treatments, he would actually try these bizarre, insane methods. Cruel methods, really. And the doctor himself ended up going mad, and he ended up jumping to his death from the bell tower. The bell tower no longer stands, but the soil is still 50% remains, so either way, ghosts or history, that's a no from me. I would rather go to... Number one, Garbage Island. We must finish with this one, the largest island of them all. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Mmm, smells good. Smells like the ocean and all the garbage we've thrown into it. It's located in the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre. There's basically four of these large systems just swirling ocean currents, and some of them are chock full of garbage. Pretty disturbing, right? I've heard of the garbage patch before, but I had no idea how large it really was. This trash island is three times the size of France. And if that's not big enough for you, it's twice the size of Texas. Someone's like, oh, now I get it. This island is man-made, obviously, and it continues to grow. But it's not all grim, however, for our number one spot. There is a team working on reducing that size. The environmental nonprofit Ocean Cleanup has removed around 65,000 pounds of trash. So maybe next time you see this, there'll be only nine islands. 
we're hoping. Starting us off at number 10 is Isla de las Manuecas. I hope I said that right. Or also known as the Island of the Dolls. Now, this island is just south of Mexico City and has quite the story. Don Julian Santana Barrera was the caretaker of this island, and one day he found a little girl drowned by the water. He had no idea how she had died, and he was unable to save her. And a few hours later, he saw a doll floating near the canal, which he assumed was most likely that girl's. Out of respect for the girl, he took the doll and hung it on one of the trees on the island, and that's how it all began. After that point, it's said that Julian started getting haunted by this girl, and in an attempt to appease his spirit, he started hanging more dolls all around the island. Those close to Julian said he changed after that period. It's like an unseen force started driving him to make these dolls his life. After 50 years of collecting dolls and hanging them, Julian was found drowned in the exact same place he had found that girl's body. Many believe Julian made up the story in his solitude, but I feel like 50 years of sticking to a fake story is a bit much. And despite thousands of people living on the island currently, most of them believe the spirit of the girl, Julian, and the dolls heavily haunt and protect the island. Many have seen the dolls move and have heard whispers coming from them, so I mean, I've given you the information, the rest is up to you whether you want to move there or not, I've done my bit. Number 9. Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean Christmas Island sounds like the perfect place for Santa Claus to go vacation after his yearly escapades around the world, giving a bunch of children gifts, but unfortunately, that's not why this dog-shaped island is named that. In 1643, an English sea captain named the island on Christmas Day, so commemorating its discovery, so he named it Christmas Island. But it actually should have been called Crab Island because every year, 50 million bright red crabs migrate to the sea to spawn. This scuttling spectacle brings in tourists from around the world to visit around October and November, hoping to witness this massive event. Coming in at number eight, Sable Island, Nova Scotia. Next up, we have Sable Island, Nova Scotia, home to the horsies. Sable Island is home to over 500 horses, and like the other animal-themed islands we will discuss later, spoilers, no one knows why. There are tons of theories as usual, horses being descendants of horses that survived shipwrecks, which by the way is another cool thing about this island. There are tons of shipwrecks, approximately 490. But beyond survivors, other theories as to how the horses got there involve Norsemen, Portuguese explorers, Acadians potentially leaving them on the island. There were so many horses at one time that the Canadian government almost had them removed and turned into pet food. The island experiences severe winters, so they thought it would help them? I don't know. What? But thank goodness that didn't happen. Children from across the country wrote in and said, don't you dare do that. Don't you dare do that. Now you can still visit today and see all of the beautiful horses out in the wild. Number seven, Snake Island. Like snakes? Like them so much you wish you saw them everywhere you went? Then boy, do we have the island for you. Snake Island is around 25 miles off the coast of Brazil, and for some reason, snakes love to live there. Legend has it that the last person to venture too close was found adrift in a boat swimming in their own blood. Yeah. So humans don't live there. In fact, it is illegal for anyone to visit. Apparently though, people used to live there until a family who inhabited the lighthouse were killed by viper snakes. Just how, just how the island has accumulated so many snakes, both venomous and not, is a mystery. One theory goes the snakes were introduced by pirates to guard their buried treasure. The most deadly adversaries of the island are the golden lancehead snakes, whose venom is five times as potent as those of their mainland cousins, lancehead snakes, who are responsible for 90% of snake bites in Brazil. Number six, Rabbit Island. Now for a cheerier place to visit. Could this be where the Easter Bunny hides out? I don't know. About two miles off the coast of Takahara, Japan, there's a place where rabbits rule. A much cuter version of Snake Island, to be fair. Nobody is quite sure how, how so many rabbits came to be on this island besides, well, you know, their mating rituals. Rabbits multiply pretty, pretty fast. It used to be where the Japanese Imperial Army would secretly manufacture poison gas for World War II, such as mustard gas and phosgene. So one theory is that rabbits were taken to the island to use as testing subjects, and when the war ended, they were released. Though other experts say they were euthanized when American soldiers came to the island. There were like 200 left. Either way, some must have escaped when, with no predators and eager tourists to feed them, they're just lounging on beaches, chilling out. Though if you do visit, don't give them cabbage. It's bad for the digestion and it makes them bloated. So give them like proper rabbit food. And number five, the Island of Dolls. If you avoid horror films, especially when they involve dolls, then this is not, not 
the island for you. Island of Dolls is a notoriously creepy island tied to the eclectic life of Don Julian Santana Barrera. For some reason, Santana left his family behind to live on this isolated island, but he soon came across a grim discovery of a drowned girl in a lake, followed by a lone doll that floated down the river a while later. Thus began the, dial the Isle of Dolls. He hung the doll from a tree, but that wasn't enough. So Don Julian collected as many dolls from trash cans in varying conditions and continued to pay tribute to the girl. Whether or not she actually existed is debated and many believe that Santana wasn't of sound mind. But when he died in 2001, his body was also discovered drowned in a canal in the same place he said he found the girl. This brought hundreds of people with dolls to the island to pay tribute to him and the girl. And if you choose to visit, you can too. Number four. Next up, we have Hashima Island, a place full of decay and dark secrets. The surface level story is that Hashima Island was once an undersea coal mining operation that was abandoned after materials depleted. Coal was discovered on the island in the 1800s and Japan left it the chance to get ahead of the game. They even built apartments and schools on the island for the miners in 1916. Now the ruins sit overtaken by nature and that should be that. But unfortunately, the miners weren't the only guests to take residency on the island. From the 1930s to the end of World War II, the island was used as a manual labor site for Korean civilians and Chinese prisoners who were forced into slave labor. It is estimated that over a thousand workers died due to harsh conditions, malnutrition, and exhaustion. What used to be a sign of Japan's industrial vigor now sits in a gray area between a reminder of a cruel time and inspiration for future industry. Next up, we have the floating islands of Lake Titicaca. I love that word. If you're planning on taking a trip to Peru, then you know where to go. Lake Titicaca is the second largest lake in the world and is also home to dozens of man-made floating islands. They are constructed by the Uru Chuluni tribe by braids of roots of the Totora plant and range in size. The islands also have to be maintained by consistently ensuring that not too much earth is piled on. Every 20 days, they add another layer of Totoro to the surface, which allows the island to keep its buoyancy. Though the island and its people still follow the traditional way of life, solar panels can be seen on some of the houses which they first started using in the 90s. Oh. And lastly, the lake is located at an altitude of 3,800 meters. So if you visit, make sure to bring your hiking boots. Number two, Palmyra Island. This one looks stunning, picturesque, dreamlike, if you will, but at a cost. This island has had so many weird things happen that even skeptics are wary of it. From planes dropping out of the sky to mysterious deaths, there's just something about this island that remains unwelcoming to any visitors. The island was first discovered in 1798 by American sailor Edmund Fanning, but he failed to officially record it, leading a ship in 1802, the Palmyra, to crash into the island. But the most famous shipwreck was the Angel in 1870. When a passing vessel came to investigate the wreckage, though it appeared the crew of the Angel had made it to the shore, they found bodies of the sailors strewn across the island, appearing to be brutally murdered. During the years that followed, many sailors would become marooned on the island, all for mysterious reasons, even as late as the 1970s. An adventurous couple, Malcolm and Eleanor Graham, planned to stay on the island where they sailed the seas, but they were never seen or heard from again, leaving no trace on the island. That was until years later, Eleanor's body was found in a metal container, having clearly been brutally murdered. Malcolm's remains have never been found, if there are any. Number one, Isola La Giola is an island, or technically two, linked together by a thin bridge just off the Gulf of Naples. Though it looks beautiful in its isolation with cobblestone streets and surrounding emerald waters, think before you visit. The island is said to be cursed and will bring bad luck to anyone who owns it. Though many speculate a famed Roman poet named Virgil taught here, no one dare set foot on the island. A string of bad luck took place on the island in the 1800s, while someone named Il Mago, aka the wizard, lived there until he mysteriously vanished. The next resident built a beautiful villa only to face financial ruin after the fact. In 1911, a captain crashed into a rocky shores while considering even buying the property. Then, in the 1920s, the villa's Swiss owner, Hans Braun, was found murdered and his wife drowned at sea. Honestly, the list goes on and on. So maybe you can still visit, but don't even think of buying. Starting off this countdown, we have McGibbon Island. McGibbon Island is a beautiful island located in New Brunswick, Canada. Shout out to Canada. Didn't know we had it in us to have some creepy islands. Now, this is the perfect island if you love being outdoors. You can kayak and fish in its clear waters and you can hike its tree covered hills. And it only costs $30,000. I mean, that's a steal for your own private island. Except you got one big issue. 
Every spring, the entire island floods. So for a couple of months, the entire island gets engulfed in water and you can't really visit it. Meaning, you can't really build anything on this island unless you don't mind it being destroyed by water. So maybe this isn't the best choice for an island. You certainly couldn't live on it, that's for sure, unless you want to drown alongside the island. Oh hell no, I ain't trying to drown. Number 9. Island of the Dolls, Mexico. Island of the Dolls already sounds like the scariest place on earth. Let's dive in. Isla de la Manicas, the island is famous for having dolls spread throughout it. Yep, hundreds of dolls are just on this island, doll parts nailed to the trees. It's just horrible. A resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera is responsible for these dolls. He did so after finding a body in a canal after they were reported as missing. And to this day, nobody dares to approach this island. They would much rather snap a few pics from their boat, which is probably a much better idea. If it didn't look haunted before with demons, it surely does now. Thanks, Julian. Number eight. McNabb's Island, Halifax. Home to dazzling parklands and gorgeous beaches, McNabb's Island, located in Halifax Harbor, has a grim history. From the late 1700s to the early 19th century, the military would use the island, specifically Moher Beach, to leave bodies on display. Yeah, how awful is that? Imagine pulling up and seeing that. Yuck. Executed criminals would just be scattered on this beach. The owner of a fishing business, Peter McNabb, hence the island's name, is said to be seen roaming this beach. Of course, in ghostly fashion, he's said to be roaming without a head. Just a headless guy. Guy walking around on the beach getting a tan. That's horrible. Four friends visited the unpopulated island 15 years ago and they used two canoes, two of them on each canoe. Quick maths, boom. Two of them left on Saturday night and the next day, one of the remaining two woke up and the other young man had drowned out of nowhere. Everybody wanted to blame that last guy, of course, but there wasn't enough evidence to follow through and they determined that it was just an accidental drowning. Haunted island or rough waters or maybe a serial killer. We don't know, this one has everything. Number seven, garbage island. This is a pretty sad one on our list today, folks. The the sea is full of aquatic, wonderful life. It's littered in treasure that has yet to be found, but sadly, it's also littered in litter. Yeah, there's an unbelievable amount of garbage out there as well. Just floating. Humans kind of suck. Right on the surface of the ocean, we have something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. They call it a patch, but really, it's an island. It's massive. It's located safely in the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre. There's basically four of these large systems, and now they're just swirling ocean currents, moving warm, cold water around with also garbage. We're just moving garbage around our planet. A plastic bag bag was recently found at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, so now we have the deepest piece of trash. That is a new low. Pun intended. This great garbage patch is larger than you think also. When I say island, you may be thinking, oh, is it this, is it this? No, it's actually twice the size of Texas. Yeah, let that sink in. Number six, Paviglia Island, Italy. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. It all started when the bubonic plague arrived there in 1348. The island instantly became a quarantine colony. So if you had symptoms or anything like that, you were sent to this island to recover, but in sad reality, they were just sent to the island to die. Again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in, and then once again, the center of the island became a mass graveyard. This was like the go-to spot for bodies and sickness. In the 1800s, the mentally ill residents were then sent to this island as an asylum was then built. The rumor was that in the 1930s, this doctor tried crazy experiments on those patients, but then he himself ended up going crazy and he jumped from the tall bell tower. And although the tower doesn't stand there anymore, his screams are still heard by locals. Another haunted island. We'd love to see it. The soil is 50% human remains at this point, so if you're looking to plant some haunted aloe vera, well, there's your spot. Number five. Easton Beach, Rhode Island. Back in 1750, the Seabird, this big, beautiful ship, slowly arrived and washed up on the shore of Easton's Beach. There was a big breakfast waiting on the table inside the ship. The kettle was boiling on the stove, but there was no sign of a crew anywhere near. Everything looked fine. No chairs were flipped. There were no frozen clocks, nothing haunting at all. No signs of violence or anything, you know, paranormal. What makes this story creepy is that after the cargo was unloaded, the Seabird itself vanished overnight. So things are just disappearing. First it was the crew, and then the actual ship. Some believe the forces of the island took the crew and then soon after took the seabird. What do you guys think? Tell us down below. Ghost Island? I think so. I wonder if there's a Ghost Island boy. That's like the boss you have to fight. You have to rap battle him. Number four. Palmerston Island. Palmerston Island is a coral ring located in the Cook Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Palmerston itself is a very small islet and a series of small islets that are located on this ring of coral. It's like a big coral reef ring that encloses a lagoon. So it's an island, but it's, you know, it's kind of an island. It's close enough. The only one of these that's inhabited, it's named Home. 
pretty good name. The closest island to Palmerston is Rarotonga, which is the capital of the Cook Islands, and it would be about a two-day sailing trip just to make the 500 kilometer distance. So if you're looking for any forbidden islands or, you know, islands that are hard to get to, this is the one you need to take. Slash, don't do this, you'll get lost and then no one will find you again. But if you aren't already on that island or planning a stop at both islands, the closest trip then would be about an eight-day sail from Tahiti. Since the island is so small, there of course is no airport or no ships can pass by there or anything like that. The only ships that can visit are the ones that are small enough to go over the reef. Yeah, the reef only allows room for smaller boats to pass through, which makes any kind of large ship unsafe to pass through there. And no one's gonna go to this place in a small little dinky boat. That sounds like a one-way trip. You want a bigger boat with more supplies, but you can't get there because of the reef. The island does see a tropical climate, but it's very exposed to tropical cyclones, which of course would cause a whole bunch of problems if you were to visit this. So imagine the island. All right, that's it. Don't go there. Boom, next. Number three. Falkland Islands, United Kingdom. Back in August 1980, a Royal Marine named Alan Addis was seen for the last time. On August 8th, Addis and a bunch of other Marines met up in the village hall. There were about 50 locals there as well, so it was pretty packed. It was a social night, everyone's having a good time. The Marines left in groups at different times throughout the evening, but until 1.30 a.m., Addis was still there. People saw him there, that's important. Now the next morning, all the Marines left to head back to base, but after sailing for 30 minutes, they realized we don't have Addis, he's still missing. They called his mother and said he was missing, but the next day they told her, that he may have drowned accidentally. No one really knew at this point. A sea and air search was obviously underway shortly after, and for a few weeks, they looked and looked, but they couldn't find anything. The following year, in April, Argentine forces invaded the islands, and this was known as the Falklands War. And during this time, the police files on Addis' disappearance were lost. So now we'll never know. We think that they were deliberately destroyed to avoid British military deployment information and being leaked into Argentine hands, but at this point, who knows? That's why we're doing spooky, mysterious islands. This is what you wanted. Number two, Eileen Moore, Scotland. What better island visit than one with nobody on it, right? No one bugging you, you can walk around naked, try the bagpipe and stuff, you know, get used to it, sound like a place. You're all alone, have fun. In 1900, a ship was heading to Flannan Islands, completely uninhabited, and on the ship, we had Captain James Harvey and Joseph Moore. They were heading there to watch the lighthouse, but upon arrival, nobody greeted them beforehand. He blew his horn, they waited, still, nobody came down. There would be a ship change, right? But no one was coming down at this point, so it's like, hmm. The replacement lighthouse keeper rode to shore, and then started walking up the steep set of stairs towards the lighthouse, but when he got there, he realized that the door was unlocked, it was kicked in, and then two of the three coats were also missing. Odd. Upon further investigation, he saw half-eaten food, a chair that had been tossed over, and the kitchen clock had stopped working. That's why I mentioned that earlier. No sign of the keepers also, which is haunting. And when checking the lighthouse's log, the previous days were odd, what was written down. On the December 12th log, the second assistant, Thomas Marshall, wrote, severe winds, the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years, but James was awfully quiet. And William, the third lad, was crying the whole time. Well, sinister vibes for sure in that journal log. This is like the lighthouse movie in real life. I'm not on board with this. I'm never going here ever. No, thank you. And finally, coming in number one, Roanoke Island, North Carolina. Just off the coast of what is now North Carolina, back in August 1587, around 100 English settlers arrived to Roanoke Island. We had John White, the governor of the new colony, and he had to sail back to England to grab more supplies. Now, while he was away, a naval war broke out between England and Spain, so his commute was obviously delayed a tad. He got back three years later in 1590 with said supplies. He's like, hey guys, sorry I'm late. There was a, you know, a naval war? You know how it is. Upon arrival, however, nobody was there anymore. His wife, daughter, granddaughter, everyone among the 100 or so inhabitants, they all vanished. The only hint as to where they went or what happened was the words Crow carved onto a tree. Crow Toan was the name of the Native American tribe that lived on the island as well, but after looking for evidence, theories, even archaeological exploration, experts still actually can't figure this one out. Little fun fact, I've actually been to this island back when I was 16, so this one really creeps me out. I found this out after I went, which is like a nice feeling. I think that's better, I don't know. 